Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to show you something in the software that you're going to be using often. It's um, access to what we call page properties. Now, there's a couple of different ways to get to the page properties for a page. And one is to go up to the page menu. This should be obvious. And then click on the link that says page properties. When you do, this sort of window comes up and allows you to adjust the settings that are configured for this specific page, which I'm going to kind of do an overview of here in a second. I'm going to show you one other way to get to this though. Usually what I do when I want to go to the page properties is I right click on a blank part of the canvas and then I go to page properties. Now I'm going to show you in this case, sometimes a blank part of the canvas is a little bit hard to find. In this case, I've got some layers here that are in the way of me getting to a blank part of the canvas. And you'd think this area right here would be blank, but it's not. This is actually a layer two, this right here. It's just white, so it looks like it's, uh, it's the canvas that I'm clicking on. But let me show you something. I'm going to move the camera over here so that you can see the properties inspector. When I clicked right here, actually right here, you can see that um, I clicked on a layer not an area of the page. So let me scroll down because I got a lot of layers right here. Not until I get down to about this area will I be able to click on a on a blank part of the canvas. If I click here and I'm doing a left click, you can see that I'm selecting the page. So anyway, that's just a real quick trick to find a blank part of the canvas. You can also go off the edge of the page here and get to it. When you do find a blank part of the canvas, uh, all you have to do is right click on it like this and you'll see that page properties is one of the options. Okay? So anyway, all that to say there's a couple of ways to get to the page properties. But let's look at what happens in the page properties. Now we're not going to go over every single detail. Frankly, some of it's advanced. Some of it you're going to rarely use. I just want to give you an overview of some of the stuff you'll mostly use when you go into this part of the software. Now, the first thing you see under the general tab is of course the title. And this is important, and I did a video about title tags, and this is something that's important for your SEO, your search engine optimization, because this is what will come up when this page is found on a search engine. This will be seen, so you want to be careful with what you put in here. It's going to need to accurately reflect what's on this page and have certain keywords in it, etc. The menu name is something that's unique to this page. If you're going to be synchronizing this with some kind of menu bar or other navigation, this is optional, but it's a good idea to have a unique name here that makes sense for this page. This is also a place where you can set the page width. Now, the page I'm working on right now, there's only one variation. I haven't made it responsive yet. If I was working with a responsive page and I was in, let's say, the 768 variation, the page width would show 768 here. So this is always going to show the page width of the current page variation I'm working on. And so mine's 1200. Now the page height is not really something you ever need to set. This is actually reporting back to you what the page height is. You can set it if you want to, but it's really not necessary because your page height is going to be determined by how far down the bottom edge of your lowest object is. Let me show you what I mean for a second. I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm going to scroll way down this page. And at the very bottom of this page, I'll need to move the camera so you can see, the very bottom of this page, I have a footer, this blue layer with the logo in it. This is the bottom object on this page, and the bottom edge of this page is always going to be where the page ends. You can see that in the uh, vertical ruler right over here, where it's around 4,300 and something. So you never really need to set that per se, because it the bottom edge of your bottom object becomes the page height. But sometimes it's a good idea to know how tall your page is. And so the page properties is going to be able to report that to you right there. Some of these things you will rarely use target screen size, the document type defaults to HTML5. That's the latest, but you do have options there if you want. The file extension is important. You'll almost always use HTML unless, of course, you're using a PHP object on this page, such as a form. A PHP form needs the page to have an extension called PHP, and this is where you do that. And again, in the forms video, I talk about why you would do that. I just want you to see where these things would appear. I have a video about favicons or favorite icons as well, and so you can watch that. And this is where you would store uh, or upload the image for your favicon for this page. And just in case you didn't know, a favicon is that little icon that shows in the upper left corner of the browser window. You can make that be a little special icon if you want. And then one of the things that I use often 
is this setting here because I almost always center my pages horizontally. You don't have to. Obviously, you have options to not center and then to center it according to these other settings if you want to. The most common is going to be this one, center horizontally. Now, your software may not default to this necessarily, but um, I usually go in when I make a new page and I set this page alignment to this one. There'll be times when you don't want to publish a page and you can do that by checking this box. Now, why would you not want to publish a web page? Well, for instance, sometimes you'll make a web page that you just use as a storage device for design. Sometimes I'll make a page and I'll just store a bunch of images on it so I don't have to keep going back and forth into my image folder or I just want to mess around with a page that's not necessarily going to be on my website, something that's kind of like a, a scratch pad, if you will. And if that's part of your website, you're going to want to check this box so you don't publish it online. It just stays part of your project as a page you don't want anybody to ever visit. So it's kind of a handy tool, actually, if you learn how to use that. And then you can synchronize this page or not when you use synchronization with your menus. You can also include this page in the search index, which means if you're using the search function, this is important, if you're using the search tool so that someone can search for, for terms on your website, you're going to decide here if this page should be included in that search. And the other one here is don't include this page in the sitemap. And remember, the sitemap, if you haven't watched that video, the sitemap is an overall uh, navigation that shows a map to your whole website. And if there's a page you want hidden or someone to not find through your sitemap, obviously you'd check that box. Most of this stuff you'll leave alone. I won't go into it here. And most of it is quite advanced. But you can take a look at that if this is something that you need. Now, once you make your settings, once you're, you make your page property settings the way you like them, you can actually set them as a default setting for all of the pages that you add to your website. So when you make a new page, it's going to default to these settings. Obviously, you wouldn't want every page to have the same title or the same menu name, but um, you might want to create a page property that's more generic and make that as default. So every time you add a new page, it already has some of the settings you want. For example, page width, centering horizontally, etc. Now, under the Style tab of the Page Properties are some other common areas. For example, Backgrounds. Now, in this case, I'm using a transparent background, which is by default. But sometimes you want a solid color, and you can do that. When you select that option, you'll be able to select the color you want your page background to be. So you can see if I do this and click OK, there's my page background. But as I said, mine is transparent, and so that's why I chose this. You can also go with gradients and multicolored gradients, patterns and textures and all the things you would imagine. If you choose to go with an image, you'll notice that the options change when I click on image. I now can select an image and I have to go find the image that I want to be part of this uh, page. And then that image, of course, becomes the, um, the background. Now, how that image is displayed is controlled by repeating it either uh, horizontally, vertically, both or not at all. And in fact, there's some other settings here. Um, if I want this image to be fixed, cover, contained, 50%, etc. And these are all covered in the background video, what these do. Of course, alignment should be obvious for that as well. This all has to do with the background image. If I change this back to, say, solid color and change this to white, these are the only options. So note that this part of the menu changes depending on the mode that you choose. You can set how links work here, but you can also do this in the Style Manager, and I recommend doing that. You can make presets of how you want your links to look, so watch the Style Manager video for that one. And then some default fonts and sizes, just things that make it a little bit faster for you. If, if you like to use you know, Arial 12 as a, def as a default font size, then you could set that here. And again, this applies to this page. Remember, this is a page property. Output format is um, going to be more advanced. You're going to almost always leave that at default, but you can experiment if you want. Have fun. The jQuery theme. Remember, jQuery themes apply to a page. That means if I put a jQuery object on this page, it's going to pick up the style of this particular theme. Again, there's a video about jQuery and themes, but I'm showing you in the page properties where that's picked up. And this particular theme is one that I made, and I called it 90 sec 0513. And so any jQuery objects on this page are going to pick up the theme that I designed in this. And there's a quick link to the theme manager if we want to go there.
Right, so let me click this, make that be white again. Let's go back to my uh, page properties. I'm right clicking, going to page properties, and let's go to the meta tags. Now there's a lot of questions about this. This is where you would set your search engine optimization meta tags. And again, I did a video about SEO, but this changes, and this is sometimes controversial in a way. There's argument about what matters to Google and what doesn't. So at the very least, you probably want some keywords, but probably not this many. This is just a demo, an example. There's talk that Google almost never looks at meta tag keywords, but maybe they do, and if they do, maybe the first five or six. So I always say it can't hurt. You wouldn't want to put 100 in here because it looks weird. But if you want to put five, six, seven, eight key phrases that make sense, it's probably okay to do that. The description, however, I think is probably the most important meta tag to pay attention to because like the title tag that we talked about over here in the general, while that comes up in Google, this can as well, the description of your page, this is probably worth doing. Google used to use a thing called categories. I don't know if they do anymore, or if they're going to again or whatever, but if you want to pick a category, you can. I think this is also up in the air. And then this just tells the browser and the, and the search engine for that matter, what web design software you used. A lot of people like to take this out. If you don't want anybody to know that you use 90 second website builder who happens to be reading your source code, you can take that out there. User defined is something that's more complex and again, rarely used and you probably don't need, ever need to worry about it. But at the very least, I recommend maybe a handful of keywords and a description in your meta tags but use your own common sense for SEO. Under miscellaneous, there's a lot of really cool features here, and some of them, again, advanced stuff. But some of the basics, some of the things you should know is if you ever wanted to make a page called a redirect, that's a page that when people go to, it actually immediately redirects them to another page. So you might want to send somebody to a web page on your website with a specific address and then redirect them maybe to another website like an affiliate link. Well, there's a real easy way to do that in 90 second. And this is where you do it. You just say, you know, redirect this to an external web address and you put the URL here. You can even set a delay if you want, or you can redirect to a page in this project. Of course, by default, you would not redirect a page. This is something you'd only do in a very special case. And then back to search engine optimization, this is how Google should crawl this page. Now, by default, Google's going to crawl this page if you leave this blank. But you can actually set it to be a nofollow or a no index down here. So if you do not want Google to crawl this page, index it or follow it, then you would choose this option. So you can do a little Google research on what no index, no follow means exactly. But generally speaking, that if you wanted to hide this page from search engines, this would be a way to do that. Index follow means you want that you want this page to be found and followed. And by default, even if you leave this blank, it's also going to be indexed. And if you do, you can also tell Google how often it should be indexed. So if you want it to be indexed and followed, and you say you change your content, let's say about every seven days, then you can have Google note that so that it will crawl every seven days so it can be updated in the search engine. And that's sometimes a good idea. So I leave these blank because um, I just like the default setting, but you can experiment with that and do some research on that. Some more advanced settings, in fact, it even says advanced, that you can play with. This has to do with your light box settings and the magnific pop-up which is a cool setting for a 90 second website builder. If you understand what jQuery is, you can choose which version of the jQuery engine you want to run. And this is the current default, but that changes from time to time as jQuery updates that software. Also, your website is gonna always be a CSS layout about 99.9% .9 of the time. In fact, the whole idea behind CSS and 90 second website builder is that your now creating tableless websites long before back in the day back in the 90s when we were making websites with tables google at one point got away from that and google doesn't like tabled websites per se however there comes a time where if you want to go back and design the old-fashioned way 90 second website builder will let you change the layout mode to a table layout again this would be a rare setting but here's a place you can do that you're gonna almost always leave that at CSS. And also, if you are making a PHP page like we talked about here, where you would set the file extension to PHP, in miscellaneous, you can, you can set which version of PHP you want to use. So the latest is PHP 7, although at the time of this recording, it's not the most common, even though it's the latest, the most common would be PHP 5. 
but probably the safest at this point would be PHP 4. If you have questions about that, you should ask your host which is the best one to use. If you want to set um, browser compatibility here, you can do that. Again, I recommend keeping the none as default, but if you understand what these are, if you want to make sure your page is compatible in a particular version, then you can choose the uh, browser you're searching for. And then finally, events, and I have videos about events. Events can be triggered for pages, and so this tab is here as well. So I'm not trying to talk fast. I'm trying to get through a lot of information, and this is very much an overview of the page properties function. Now, the page properties is an important part of your design. At the very least, just for the general tab and setting your page width, the centering, your file extensions, and also the style of your background. This is what you're mostly going to use in the page properties. But I just wanted you to have an overview of some of the cool features that are ultimately hidden inside this gem inside 90 Second Website Builder.